Linda Sarsour. She came out with a tweet that said, um, I lost all my contacts on my iPhone. Does anybody know why? And so me as Mossad quote tweeted and just responded, yes. This is a Visegrad 24 series about the Israel-Hamas war. So we are here today with Mr. Sean Ain, who is uh, known for some of his uh, Twitter activity and his general uh, international diplomacy using humor. Uh, is the progenitor of a, a great account uh, known as the Mossad. I.L. Mossad I.L. Yes. Mossad I.L., the, uh, the satire of Mossad, which I think actually has more followers than the official Mossad account. Uh, the official Mossad account has, I think, um, in the tens of thousands, yeah. but they never use it. So yeah, yeah. Well, they don't want to give up their secrets. Exactly. So you're really their PR guy. I'm the PR guy. Yeah. Also, tell, tell us what, you know, what the genesis of, what, why you did it, and uh, you know, the motivation, the, the technics and logistics, the growth. Give us a little uh, lowdown. Really, it's, it's just me, um, bored one day. <laughs> no, really, I've been doing uh, Israel advocacy for, for a long time. One day, I had the bright idea after somebody in Egypt and I'm not saying just somebody in Egypt, somebody high up in the government in Egypt would uh, go out and blame the Mossad for sending sharks to eat their tourists. Uh, somebody in Iran who would blame the Mossad for stealing their clouds. And of course, there was the story a few years ago uh, of a gentleman in, uh, in the UK who is uh, the leader of a Muslim group who uh, went on a 15 minute rant on YouTube about how the Mossad uh, broke into his house one day and uh, moved around some furniture and stole one shoe. So that became, you know, shoe gate. Um, comedy writes itself. Comedy writes itself. So I'm like, no, come on. Somebody has to open up. Someone's got to get some clicks off. Somebody's got to, right. So opened up the account. And I said, okay, somebody has to be that Mossad. Not the real Mossad. Yeah. Not the, the yeah. actual uh, intelligence agency. I'm talking about like, the Mossad that has an infinite budget yeah. who will do anything, uh, like control the weather, train sharks with lasers on their heads, anything, you name it. Anything just could be comedic. And I said, this is a well of humor and yeah. also good advocacy for Israel, so. Totally. Um, well, it's, uh, and you were based here when you did it. I was, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, the, uh, the, the whole meme of, you know, blame the Jews, J-double-O-S, triple parentheses, you know, the memes are, they do write themselves, as we just said. So what are some of your greatest hits? What are some of the, you know? uh, The greatest hits, well, the, I would say the, the one tweet that's the most memorable that kind of uh, launched everything, one of the first ones, uh, the one where I kind of just started and uh, I was still under the handle of the Mossad with the official emblem. Since yeah. then, I've changed it to a fake emblem. Um, don't want to confuse people. Don't want to confuse people. It still confuses people, which is yeah. awesome. But there was uh, the lady uh, named Linda Sarsour who... Uh, you know, made, it, made a name for herself to be, well, among other things, anti-Semitic. She came out with a tweet that said, um, I lost all my contacts on my iPhone. Does anybody know why? And so me as Mossad quote tweeted and just responded, yes. Have you actually spoken to anybody from the Mossad or Israeli government who says um, you're giving away our secrets? You know, our space lasers are just for us. They're not supposed to know about them. <laughs> no. They, they said uh, they said you can keep using the space laser. It's all yours. Uh, you've earned it. Copyright infringement stuff? No, copyright nobody's, infringement. Nobody's, no. nobody's come knocking at your door at 4.30 a.m. saying we want our handle back? <laughs> no, honestly, um, I did get some feedback from official sources um, saying that they actually like it. They, they're really uh, they're for, for what I do. And uh, uh, just the only caveat they added was... Uh, uh, because of the blue check mark now, yeah. please add satirical on your yeah. name. And that's where that came from. Now I can no longer be the Mossad end. Did you see any suppression? Did you see any uh, anything quirky in the algorithm? Uh, did you see any changes when there was a new regime coming into Twitter? Um, no. Okay, great. Um, but I do know that others have been affected. Um, uh, if anything, my engagement grew. Um, after the regime change, after <clears throat> Elon came on board, um, I'm name dropping him, Elon. You know why? Because he follows me. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's nothing if not a fan of good humor. That's right. <laughs> you know, they really relaxed the rules on uh, hate speech. Unfortunately, 
And I have written about that in the Jerusalem Post. That it's just getting out of control. Like, like I'm getting, so, everybody's getting so much hate messages. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're here on the other side trying to fight against just that. Um, so, I mean, engagement increased. Um, I'm getting a lot of shares. A lot of people are more motivated to share my stuff in the face of all that anti-Semitism that's uh, being allowed to to flourish on uh, X. Now, there are some other very funny accounts, and you guys cross-post each other a lot. You know, the uh, the, the Gaza Ministry of Health, for instance. Yeah. Uh, with numbers. Now, do you know who's behind that account? Do you guys uh, chat, coordinate, uh, or just kind of freewheel it off each other organically in the public sphere? Uh, yeah, we do have a secret, me and uh, um, Gaza Health Ministry. They're both run by me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> breaking news breaking news here you heard it first the Mossad is actually working directly with the Gazan Ministry of Health yeah so uh, one and the same <laughs> so, no one you're other all the time. so that's how it's I boosted that stuff. account so. it's also great, great stuff and it's yeah. uh, it takes a slightly different frame you know sort of blame the Mossad it's mostly a lot of stuff lately on numbers yeah. you know yeah. 24 billion you know this or that and just the really mimicking because the Gaza Ministry of Health itself is a bit of a parody of itself yes so you're just it's, highlighting that it's written actually in the bio and we're a parody of a, of a health agency um, so one thing I've noticed in, in a lot of interviews with uh, international media is people are saying 24,000, 24, they're all, half of them are kids. Um, nobody's saying that any uh, actual Hamas fighters were, were killed. Nobody seems like there, there is pushback against that. I'm not going to say nobody does, but there's very little, not enough, to say that those numbers are, I'm sorry, BS. Yeah. Can I cuss? Yeah, sure. They're bullshit. <laughs> we don't have like an FCC here. The Gaza Health Ministry is, in essence, Hamas. So, I mean, there's a well of ideas and, and uh, things to parody on that side as well, not just health aspects. We had a great uh, tweet, you know, going to those numbers. 24,000, half of them are kids, half those kids are Hamas fighters, half those Hamas fighters are journalists, and half those journalists are also doctors. Yes. Which is, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I'd love to see you step up your, uh, your sat satirizing uh, the farce that is, you know, the Red Cross, the UN, uh, UNRWA. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna ruffle some feathers. Let's I'm talk a little about it, yeah. little bit about you know just humor as a, as a component of the Jewish condition of mm -hmm. something that sustained our people. I mean, uh, you know, Americans all know Fiddler on the Roof, yeah. and there's a lot of you know dark humor in there that actually makes it a light show. Yeah. and that's I think a little bit about what you do. So what what what's your thought, especially now in a time of of incredible tragedy, how humor is is an effective tool to help uh, sustain the people and get people some closure. Absolutely. I, humor is, is, has been a tool for the Jewish people for ages to get us through hard times. Um, I mean, even, even today, I never thought that I would live through an event that was so horrible um, that, you know, humor couldn't, couldn't be used. Um, our generation didn't live through the Holocaust, but now we have uh, October 7th and you know the few days afterwards like what do you do here like everyone was in shock uh, nobody can make any jokes in the days after but uh, then then I guess the Jewish humor gene you know it's, it's in, encoded in our genes right that say you know we have to get through this and the way to do it is to to uh, parody the other side parody the enemy right just um, Honestly, I've never seen Fiddler on the Roof, which may come to a surprise. Oh, yeah. Another breaking news. But I am a huge fan of Mel Brooks. Yeah. So I think he's the epitome of Jewish humor for me. Totally. And, um, you know, I, I listened to his audiobook just uh, not too long ago, and he did. He said pretty much the same thing, that, you know, we as the Jewish people have this, this weapon of, of hilarious destruction, right? Um, and uh, I think it's a, it, it's a disarm, it, it disarms the enemy quite, quite a bit. And a lot of the humor uh, embedded in sort of the Jewish zeitgeist is self-deprecating. Yeah. So it's, you know, you look at Woody Allen's humor, it's always, you know, very self-deprecating of his own stature, his own character in his movies. Yeah. When, uh, when did you get back on the horse after September 11th? When did you, because you also started to pivot and reported stuff. Yeah. You also start putting, used that platform of, you know, was it half a million, three quarters of a million? It's a pretty big blast radius. Yeah. And you were now sharing things that were not satire, but were uh, pointed and poignant of what was going on around the world and of the anti-Semitism, 
Uh, but when did you sort of say, okay, you know what, now is a moment that we not make light of what happened, but uh, we try and lighten the air for a moment because it's, uh, it's ameliorative, it's therapeutic. Uh, yeah, she said September 11th. I don't know if it was uh, by mistake. October 7th. He said October 7th, yeah. Um, but... Uh, Though the parallels are quite... The parallels, actually, I was but, in New York then for that. Yes, and it's, it's, it's good that you mentioned September 11th because I, I actually did learn a lot. I took a lot of humor that happened after September 11th, and uh, there are a lot of parallels to what happened uh, today in, in the sense of how to, um, how, to, how to be funny in times of tragedy. Um, <clears throat> There, I mean, there is such thing as too soon. I think everybody judges for themselves what's what's too soon. Um, I know, I mean, watching old uh, John Stewart and uh, you know back in two thousand and one when when they were big, right? How did they handle these things, right? So uh, you know, they're not laughing at the tragedy; they're laughing at the um, the reactions to the tragedy. To see, uh, they're laughing at how we're we're dealing with it, right? saying that, um, you know, the enemy is doing something, let's laugh at them, right? Let's laugh at them. Um, the same thing over here uh, on October 7th, of obviously no jokes were made that day. Um, it, and uh, since that day, my, my tweets have been really half straight news, sharing um, material from the IDF spokesman, uh, spokesperson and uh, uh, various you know, sources uh, and the groups that were all together, you know, there's lots of WhatsApp groups that share a lot of information um, and I create my own material um, and it's interspliced with the humor because you can't forget that, you know, that's what really disarms the enemy. And um, another point to make is that when I am humorous, the uh, replies on that, the humorous tweets, I get far fewer hateful replies on the humorous tweets because they, they don't have anything to say, except for the bots, you know. <laughs> they have, they'll say free Palestine with every yeah. everyone. But, um, but that's it. That's how I've been managing it. Uh, what about the po political side? I, you know, I was in New York September 11th, and it was very soon after that George W. Bush became, you know, the butt of jokes again, mm -hmm. his reactions to it, his foot and mouth uh, situations that he had over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, here there's also a very divided political scene, as we saw last year. Now, obviously, everyone's unified. Uh, are the politicians fair game? Well, because my, my tweets, the uh, audience is not in Israel, um, I tend to avoid internal politics in my tweets. Um, it doesn't do any favors, really, um, because, you know, it's a very, very strong message if, you know, we're all unified, even the people who normally uh, are left in Israel, um, if they're Israelis, I mean, right now there's one focus, um, to get rid of the, the terrorist entity that, is, that did that horrible thing. Um, and I think that unified message is one needs to be broadcast outside. Um, so their politicians are fair game. So, you know, uh, any Khomeini uh, stuff in the hopper? Because he's a cartoon time. character. He's an evil cartoon character, but he's, uh, you know, all the time they're very blame the Jews kind of mentality. Yeah. And some of the stuff is pretty ridiculous. So is there any politicians that you like to uh, unleash your humorous ire upon from, um, from that part of the world? I mean, uh, Khomeini, obviously. Um, for a while, I had a, a long-running joke on my uh, Twitter account that I only follow one account, and it's Khomeini or whoever happens to be like the anti-Semite of the of, of the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the I had uh, one follower. Reina. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, so every once in a while, that would change, and then be you know part of the thing. People say, "Did you know that Assad only follows one person?" And it's like Khomeini. Um, Have any of them blocked you? Um. Uh, politicians, not really. Um, or like enemies, like ma uh, major figures, media figures. No, Linda Sorsour blocked okay. me after that that yeah. yes tweet. Um, she doesn't seem like she has a deep appreciation of humor from what I've seen in New York and no. elsewhere in the U.S. 
No, I don't think. Uh, I think she's fallen off the radar. What about uh, the the Americans who are the cartoon characters uh, riling up the uh, the Marxist indoctrinated leftist students, the uh, Rashida Tlaibs, the uh, AOCs? I mean, we have you know the AOC parody was one of the most controversial parodies yes. in the U.S., and that's when they started the rule of defini defining parody because people couldn't tell <laughs> if the parody account was her talking or not. Yeah. So yeah. they had they said you have to put parody in the uh, in the title. Yeah, that's right. So that's the, <laughs> the we can all blame. AOC parody. So what do you have next in your building out of uh, your humor empire? Um, your empire of laughs, if you will. Yes, like I have a full-time job, right? Yeah. So it's like what I'd love to do, my dream, uh, was to is to reduce the hours at my full-time job so that I can focus on um, uh, building out onto other platforms. I would love to do videos. Mm. Um, I mean, TikTok is like the biggest thing. Um, you know, say what you will about the platform. I have my reservations as well, but, um, you know, it is creating buzz. It is creating engagement. Um, and uh, to, to actually do some good humor, I have tons of good ideas. I just have to get them out there uh, to somebody who could, you know, turn it into something tangible, like a, a video. What are, what are some of the things that people have reached out to? Do people reach out with ideas on things to, to satire and spoof? Or do they, people have reached out with, you know, you've helped me in this period uh, because this has been, you know, you made me laugh for the first time in weeks or months. Uh, people with some heartfelt confessions about their own experience. Indeed, indeed. Um, and I have to say that um, because of, you know, my full-time job, there, I get so many DMs. And I'd love to get back to everybody, and I really do mean to. So if you've sent me a DM, I promise I'll get back to you, and I'm not ignoring you on purpose. But yes, there are definitely people in Turkey, um, Jewish people in Turkey, who have reached out to me, people in Iran that are saying thank you. Like, the, what you're doing on Twitter is, like, really uh, is getting me through this. Um, the Jewish people in Turkey are saying, like, you know, of course, um, the whole country has turned into, like, Hamas-loving nation where they put uh, a giant picture of terrorists on uh, on billboards and then um they, they they dm me and they said thank you for what you're doing and uh you know i write back and forth i think just writing back and forth to these people really uh, helps out a lot um Octo like and on october 7th itself um you know I even changed my bio in my uh, Twitter that, that says it's not a parody for the, for the next few weeks. I'm just going to talk straight, yeah. share straight news, okay? Um, because, yeah, there is a time for uh, grieving. Uh, I guess, you know, you could say my account sat Shiva for, <laughs> for a while, right? So, and uh, gradually getting back to the humor. So just Wasn't it a, a Turkish legislator who uh, railed from the floor of the Turkish legislature uh, and said, you know, the Jews, the Jews, they had a heart attack the next day? Yeah, well, I could have done so many things with that. I, you know, it's, it's tough to not, like, when somebody actually dies, yeah. um, like, there's such a sensitive thing because you don't want to offend somebody who just died, but, you know. Well, so it's truly evil. But... When that happened, yeah. it was like you just literally on the spot uh, where he's saying railing against the Jews and on that spot, like a lightning strike came from the heavens and gave him a heart attack. That was poetic in ways that poetry can't even describe. Yeah. So, yeah. I had uh, rabbi friends hitting me, you know, with that, with the clip and saying, see, you need a rap to fill in more. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about uh, people in these countries like Turkey, uh, like, say, Syria or Jordan, if they have access? Has anyone said, you know, I really hated Israel and hated Jews, and I saw the work you did and thought it was funny, and it made me smile, and I was surprised at that? I can't say I've had any full conversions, but I did have Softies. a few. Yeah, I did have a few comments saying, you know, this actually made me laugh. Ultimately, how we can make peace is, is through yeah. laughter and joy. That's right. And, you, and you're a part of that. I'm glad to be it. I'm glad to be part of it. Great work, dude. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have a lot of fans all over the uh, English-speaking world, uh, I'm sure. Is, is, are your dominant uh, traffic U.S., Western Europe? Uh, it's all over. There's a lot of traffic from India. 
They love us, and yeah. I gotta say, I love them back. <laughs> yeah, well, if you look at their border regions, you can understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for the work you do. I think it's really important, and if we lose our ability to laugh, we lose our identity and our humanity. Yes. So you're helping keep that going in tough times. Big part of it, yeah. Good meeting, Sean.